If you're interested in following me through the live steps of buying, refurbishing, renting, and refinancing a buy-to-let property using somebody else's money, then you're in the right place. My name's Dan, welcome to another video. If it's your first time here and you're interested in hearing about all things UK buy-to-let property related, make sure you start now by subscribing and clicking the bell to ensure that you don't miss a thing. In this video series, I'm going to take you live on the journey of me buying a property with somebody else's cash, fully renovating it before putting a mortgage on the property with the intention of releasing all of the initial funds. So if you're ready, let's see if I can do it. So it's the 27th of March 2022 and I'm just on my way now to view a property. This property has actually come to me through a private vendor, so it's somebody that I know. It sounds like there's quite a big job. So I'm going to go and have a look around it, then I'm obviously going to sit down with the vendor, um, have a look at the work that needs carrying out, how much it's going to cost and see if we can come together and agree on a price. So I've just come out of the property now and wow! My word, there's some work to be done. It needs a new bathroom, new kitchen. There's wallpaper absolutely everywhere on all of the ceilings, all of the walls. I also do think when that wallpaper comes off, the plaster will come off with it as well. So potentially a whole plaster job all the way through. Um, the lounge is also damp, so we'll need a damp course or some treatment taken on in there. In the cellar, it's wet, it's moist in there. There's loads of work to be done. So I'm gonna go away now, have a look at it, crunch some of the numbers and actually see how much I think this project's gonna cost. Um, I'm guesstimating just off the top of my head from having a brief look around sort of in the 25 to 30 thousand pound mark so obviously depending on the price that we can agree whether the job will be worth it for me or not because it's also going to take some considerable time but also as well just the stress of managing or working a project like this um, takes its toll after a while and it does take you away from anything else that you are doing so I've just been having a chat with Cheryl my mortgage advisor who's helped me out with a few and number of options um, that are available to me because obviously with this property it's going to take some considerable time to be able to turn it around and make it habitable for tenants to be able to move in so your mainstream lenders won't typically want to loan to me knowing that actually the property is going to be empty and I'm not going to have an income coming in which then in turn would obviously get paid to them so there are some options available but they are slightly different to your standard buy to let mortgage let me tell you about option number one first it's with fleet mortgages it's going to be a product that spans over 27 years. It comes in at a rate of 2.99% and that's on a 75% loan to value. Now it is a standard mortgage product, but it does have a 90 day window, which allows me to carry out those refurbishments. And this would just actually depend on what the surveyor says when he goes into the property. The property has to be habitable. So that's a question mark for me, whether he would class it or she would class it as habitable. And then if it is, they will loan or the lender fleet mortgages will loan on the current value of the property and then once that two year fixed term is up i would be able to refinance at the new um, value of the, the property is after i've done those renovations so there's a couple of question marks in there in the fact that would the surveyor actually say that the property is habitable and also would it be possible for me to actually get this work done in three months to be honest i don't think it is possible what with all the trades that I'd have to actually pass through the place from somebody doing the lounge floor, changing all the joists, changing all the windows, new kitchen, new bathroom, complete renovation job. I actually think it's going to be very, very difficult or very tight to actually get the job turned around within three months. So I have asked Cheryl if she can go back to the lender and just say to them, what if it does take longer than three months? Because really, so long as they're being paid back, it shouldn't really affect them. But this is a specific or a special product for investors that need to do a light refurbishment onto a property before actually the tenants move in. So it'll be interesting to see what she says on that one. Option number two is a refurbishment loan. Now, I would be borrowing 75% of the current value. However, once I turn the property around and it was fully renovated, the lender would send the surveyor back and then they would revalue the property and release the extra funds for what the property is now worth. So this seems like a, a really good option. There's also a window of six months to be able to complete that work before you then get it revalued, which makes it kind of like a bridging arrangement. Now, there is a separate fee that you would pay on the money that you're actually borrowing while the property isn't turning. So let's say on the bridging part of it, and then it would kick in once it had been revalued into a normal standard mortgage product where you would, where you would pay the, the current going rate. Now, the rate on this mortgage is slightly higher than the first option one that we talked about. Option one was at 299%. 
This one's at 314%, but there's also an arrangement fee as well, which is 2% of the loan. So it is a little bit more expensive. But where that bridging element is, there's also an extra charge for that as well. So it would be 0.47 to 0.75%. So as an example, if I loaned £55,000 for six months, then £2,500 extra would be added on to the loan or the interest that I would need to pay back on that loan. Over the six month period, that would kind of be about £416 per month as an additional cost for me taking on that renovation project. However, on this product, the minimum amount that the lender will loan to me is £60,000, meaning that the purchase price would have to be £80,000 or above. I've actually agreed the sale at £75,000, so there's another complication that this is going to add to it. Option number three is buying cash. So I could actually purchase the property in cash, do the full renovation, and then actually refinance the property to take that money back out. The only caveat with this one is that lenders now typically want you to own the property for six months if you're buying it in cash before you can then put a mortgage product on it. So first of all, I would have to find the cash. So I need to find £75,000 including the money it's going to cost me to renovate, which I estimate about twenty-five to £35,000. So I'm going to have to initially find that money and then wait for six months before I can refinance the property to actually take that money back out. What am I going to do? I actually don't know at the moment. So I need to go away, have a think about it, look at these options in detail, and then I'll come back and let you know. If you're just starting out investing in property, why not pick up a free copy of my book, How to Buy to Let, where I take you through each and every single step of purchasing a safe, solid, sound, secure, and profitable buy to let investment property. This is the exact blueprint that I've used to purchase 16 buy to let properties and to build a portfolio that's now worth over two million pounds simply go to the description below click on the link and i'll send you out a free copy so i've decided i'm going to buy this property in cash now i've got really lucky in the fact that my mum and stepdad are actually going to lend me the money to purchase it and the reason why they would be keen to do that is because they want a hassle-free easy sale basically um, to be able to get the funds as quickly as they possibly can to be able to then give to my stepdad's brother to be able to help him in his supported living. So that helps them out on that side. Obviously the, the short-term loan helps me on my side. How I'm going to pay them back is obviously I'm going to renovate the property and then after a six-month period, now I just have to wait for six months because the lenders, if you do it before six months, the lenders actually will class it as a same day, a same day mortgage, even though it's not on the same day that you actually buy it. And then the rates go higher. So after six months, I will then be able to get a, a standard normal mortgage product on the property. Another slight issue and a slight twist to this one is I've got two properties at the moment going through the solicitors. I've got the deposits for them and the legal fees, etc. And I've got a little bit set aside for some renovations. But depending on how much those renovations cost me, I actually don't have the funds to renovate this property and I think it's going to cost me about £30,000. So what I could do, options are, I could leave it sat there until I can generate these funds from other properties or obviously from my day job as well. Alternatively, um, I can start begging and borrowing from other people. So I might go to other family members, my girlfriend or I might go to my brother etc and just see if they can lend me some funds just to fully renovate this property and then of course when I do refinance it I'll take it back out and then give them the money back with a bit of a sweetener on top of it as well. Just heading over to the property now to meet a builder, um, a contractor who's going to have a look around and let me know if he can take on the work for me. And the reason why I'm keen to do this is because this is a massive job. There's a lot of work that needs doing. And like I say, I've got two others coming through the solicitors at the moment. That Yes, they're going to need just a light decorating and turn around, but I'm keen to get those turned around quick to get them herding for me, but also have somebody working on this property as well. So I'm pretty stretched. So I've just met with my first uh, property maintenance guy which seems really nice really nice bloke actually so I've asked him for to quote me up for an arrangement that would break the jobs down sort of individually um, so I can actually see what they are see what he's going to be charging you know per, per job etc but also mentioned that you know if and when or um, I get time then I'm also going to be popping over um, and just doing little bits here and there to sort of help out even if um, you know I, ju I just come in and strip some wallpaper off or clean the place out or paint some skirting boards etc um, it's not going to be my sole focus but I am going to be going in 
one and checking the work of course seeing how the guys are doing but also as well i'm going to be in there um just sort of helping out and, and um doing what i can when i want to when i choose to um so he's going to go away now put a quote together and then come back to me later on so i'm just on my way now to meet uh, another contractor or builder who's uh, interested in taking on this project for me now this is it's so important for me to get this right you see i'm typically the let's say the, the glue that holds these projects together so i'm the guy in there that's stripping the wallpaper that's um you know putting the skirting boards back on painting the walls etc doing all this kind of stuff that you know your, your sort of general labor or your general builder would be typically doing um, and then i'll bring in my specialist so my plumber my electrician my plasterer etc to do all the skilled trades um, that, that I need to be able to help me move on to the next step. However, with this property, I actually want the whole place done by somebody else. Um, but it is new for me because new, normally I'm, I'm so involved. So I want to make sure that I get the right person to be that glue in the middle of it for me, to be able to, to get all of those jo jobs done in the right order and done to a high spec and high standard as well. So I'm meeting another one there tonight. What I've also done today though, is actually just contacted my plumber and my Sparky and just ask them if they've got time just to pop in and go and do these couple of jobs before I even give the property over to the person that I'm going to be working with. If I know that the electrics have been done right, I'd be happy. If I can get some, my plumber in to sort the bathroom, then that would be two big jobs that actually could be done pretty much straight away, even before this team or this builder takes the property on. Good grief. Um, yeah, so last chap. Um, not quite as uh, impressive as the first chap and my word could he talk last thing you want is a talker on your projects when you're paying them good money to do a job so no um yeah that one really didn't work there was a lot of things that he just don't know the first guy that i spoke to um was asking me really sort of um smart and sensible questions whereas this guy didn't really seem to have a, an idea about what he was talking about so um yeah, definitely not a wasted journey. Um, it's an education in finding somebody to be able to take on this project for me, but yeah, it's a no for this guy. Here we are on Bank Holiday Monday, and I know what you're thinking, but Dan, you said for this property, you're gonna pay somebody else to do it. And I know, but I just can't help myself. So I've actually just come in to check out the kitchen behind me. I plan just to completely strip it out, um, ready for my trades people to come in, um, simply because I actually love doing it. I know, sad, I know, and I should be doing something different, but I took one day off this weekend. So yes, I am enjoying life, but I know, I know, sad, but I enjoy stripping out dirty old kitchens as well. So here we are at the end of the afternoon. Kitchen is looking a lot bearer from uh, when you saw it this morning. I still actually do want to get that fireplace out before I go, if I can do. Um, I also got a little bit um, excited with um, the hammer and chisel uh, and started stripping out the bathroom as well. So you can see that I've managed to get all of the tiles off the walls as well. Just heading over to the property now to meet my first window company. I've actually got three window companies booked in meeting the first one this evening. A um, main point is going to be that I want to get rid of all of those click clack windows um, and just change them for normal standard opening windows. I'm also this evening meeting two uh, general labourers as such. So I put a post out on the local Facebook group um, just asking for unskilled workers really or anybody that is just looking um, for a short term um, cash influx just to you know just to sort of help me out within a property. I just put stripping wallpaper. Um, I've got about four or five of these guys to meet. Um, I've got the first couple this evening um, who I'm just going to sort of have a bit of a chat with, see how they scrub up really because I mean don't get me wrong I need to, I want an unskilled cheap labourer to help me out however I would pay somebody a little bit more if they're going to be trustworthy, reliable and do a decent job as well so obviously I just need to be cautious and careful exactly who it is that I'm picking up because I'm not going to be there so they're going to have to manage themselves to actually go in, do the work that is required, do it to a high standard and be trustworthy to be in my property on their own. So I've had the first window guy in that's quoted me uh, 6,400 quid for two doors and the five windows. I've also had a, um, a builder in that's going to do, who says that he can do everything and he's actually going to break down all of the jobs for me. So then by the time 
if I do use him, by the time I get to him, I can actually just cross off all of the jobs that I've already had done, such as the windows, for example. And then I've had two labourer guys um, who came round to see about uh, stripping off the wallpaper for me. Um, the first one, really nice guy, Lithuanian chap. He's working over in Nottingham at the moment, renovating properties. Um, and he wanted to do it in the evenings uh, when he got back. And he said he reckoned it would take him about four, four days or so to get all of that wallpaper off um, and he quoted me he gave me a price of 500 quid um, however then another chap came around um, who said either 50 or 60 quid a day he reckoned it'd probably take him about three or four days so I'm going to set him to work all of the other people that I've contacted like the ones that have got a bit of skill or a bit of trade behind them they're all quoting about 140 150 quid a day okay so we can have a we've got a little bit off round the door here looks like Started to all come off in the kitchen and the ceiling as well, which is which is good. It's a little bit patchy. There are bits and bobs everywhere, but it's a good start, that's for sure. Um, been a little bit done in the hallway as well and in this corridor. So he's been grafting, like, and that's cost me sixty quid, sixty quid for the first day. Um, so he thinks it'll probably take him about three or four days. So that's the bathroom stripped out. Just a handy hint for you. When you are stripping out these properties, if you've not done it before and you don't know, these copper pipes are actually worth quite a bit of money. So I would definitely advise that you save them and then take them in your car down to the local skip or um, the recycle centre, I believe they call it now, or there might be a metal recycling point um, around your area. If you collect them all up, I just tend to bend them all up so they're nice and easy to transport. I just keep them to the side. Uh, make sure that the plumber doesn't steal them because all the plumbers know this trick. Sorry, any plumbers out there. Um, but yeah, if you take them down to the recycle point, you'll get a fair bit of money for them. So the next job is for me to work out which one of these chimneys is actually mine in the lounge of my property. So one will be for next door and one will be for my property. So what I'm actually going to do is use these smoke bombs um, or smoking uh, detectors. So basically you just buy them off eBay or Amazon just for a couple of quid. I'm going to put them at the bottom of the chimney breast inside the house and then hopefully we're going to be able to see this red smoke coming out the chimney. There we go. So you can see that they're kicking out a load of smoke. So interestingly it's actually coming out of both of the chimneys. And then actually here you can see exactly what I'm talking about where they've got a cowl on top of them. So you can see that the air can flow but nothing, no rainwater can actually pass in of these two types that you've got up here. This is just next door. So after a solid weekend, let me just give you a quick tour around to show you where I'm at. I've actually stripped all of that plaster off the wall there because that's where we had some damp issues. So I'm actually going to inject those walls for replastering over it. I've taken, I've doubled up the air brick at the bottom there, but when I took this skirting board off, you can see that there's a, a big hole to the outside of the property, which is interesting. I've uh, stripped out all the way around the windows here and also started taking the wallpaper off as well. Oh, and in the lounge here, I've also got rid of that fireplace and I've also opened up the bottom of the fireplace now. So it goes all the way down into the cellar. So I've got air now coming from the cellar all the way up the chimney. Um, and then when I plaster this over, I'll put a vent in it, but leave that air flowing through. If we then come through into the kitchen, you can see that I've completely ripped out the kitchen. Also, I had some damp issues down there as well. The fireplace has also gone and that'll be the same deal. However, this fireplace is actually um, not causing any damp issues at all. And that's because there's a cowl on top of this one. Um, so no water ingress can get in, but you can see the whole kitchen has been ripped out now. I've just got all the piping. I've taken that out this morning. So that's all of the old heating and water system. Again, I've stripped out around the window, out into the back passageway just here. I've removed all the plaster, all the contaminated plaster from the wall there because I had some damp issues. Again, I'm gonna be injecting it and then I'll plaster, uh, put plasterboard over it and then plaster it. Bathrooms completely stripped out um, and kind of, yeah, ready for us now to really sort of doing the prep work in there for us to be able to start. If we then move on and up the stairs, not done anything in the stairwell just yet, but what I have been doing, is gutting these bedrooms. So you can see I've ripped off the skirting board, I've taken the boiler out there, 
all the pipe work is now gone. The electrics are still here because I'm going to get my Sparky to sort that out. But I, around the window, I have completely got rid of all of the old sort of wood um, effect because I'm just going to have it plasterboarded um, and looking all good and nice. So in the cupboard, managed to get rid of all of the old water system there. Um, so there was a water tank um, that has now been removed. And then as we come into the front bedroom as well, you can see I've got all of the skirtings off. I uh, started taking a little bit of the wallpaper off, stripped all around the window. Um, all of that, those pipes um, have now gone as well, which is good. And this one, once all that wallpaper is off, then of course we can start the prep in here as well. So getting on really well now. So I've just been to the local scrap merchant and weighed in all of those copper pipes that I took out over the weekend and get to 335 pounds. Now bearing in mind, that is also before I've weighed in the full tank as well. Now, just a handy hint for you is if you're going to be taking these copper pipes, make sure you take the brass ends or the brass fittings off them as well because they weigh them in separately and you get a little bit more money for them. So if you just take all of the fittings off, weigh them in, and then you weigh your copper pipes in. And what I would say is if you're going to get a plumber to do all of your work for you, make sure you ask them to leave all of the pipes behind because what they tend to typically do is say that you know we will do an all encumbered job so we'll change all your heating system for you um, and then so they charge you for ripping it all out and taking it all out which is fair enough it, you know it takes a while to get it out but what they don't tell you is that they're then going to take it to the metal merchants and they're going to cash it in and get a decent amount of money for it. Okay so I've just got my first quote back now from one of these all inclusive builders that says they're going to do absolutely everything for me so let me just read this for you I've got a full rewire with white fitting three sockets per room six in the kitchen an electric shower electric cooker pendants throughout the property with six spots in the kitchen new consumer unit moved to the living room two sockets in the cellar um, a combi boiler installed in the kitchen new radiators new piping new plumbing fully plastered throughout uh, new skirting architrave new doors full bathroom refit with bath electric shower over the ba over bath uh, screen toilet sink and tiled kitchen in white gloss with integrated oven and hob and extractor fan uh, carpets upstairs laminate flooring downstairs loft insulation comes to a total of £29,900 and then if I wanted the chimney removed um, in the kitchen area that would be £1,150 without any building controls and if one, if you want cut, um, building controls then it's an extra £200 and then he just puts on the quote as well if um, if we've lift, left anything out or if we're missing anything then just to let him know. So actually that's pretty competitive. I was thinking the job was going to come in at around twenty-five to thirty thousand pounds. So actually, that's not bad at all. Now, this also gives me a good indication of what it is an all-inclusive builder would do um, throughout the property for me. That if I went through this with a fine tooth comb, I'm sure there's going to be a few bits and bobs that maybe have missed off. But also, there's a lot of things in there as well that I can do myself. So where my head's at at the moment is, I'm actually thinking that I might just manage my own tradespeople to do the work. Um, but I am actually thinking this whilst at the moment I don't have another property to focus on myself. So I can keep going in um, to the property at the moment and turning things around. So on top of that quote, also obviously I've got to factor in there the windows and doors. And the first quote that I had for the windows and doors came in at £5,600. And I've just shown another couple of guys around this morning. So I'm waiting for their quotes to come back as well. So it's looking like it could be an all-in job for about £35,000, which actually isn't really bad to say that everything needs doing in this property. So we're just on the 8th of May and I'll give you a quick tour around just so you can see where we're at. I've actually been working on this damp course using some dry zone damp uh, treatment um, uh, along these walls here where that initial damp was when we first got into the property. If you actually wanted to check out this video, um, this is where I actually go through the steps of how I actually treated this damp um, and the steps that I've actually taken to be able to get rid of it for the future. So you can see here in the lounge, we're pretty much all the wallpaper's now been stripped off. The windows and doors are ready to be changed. Um, I now need to dot and dab and board over where I've just been sorting out this damp and over that fireplace there as well um, before obviously we can get it skimmed. Coming into the kitchen, you can see that I've had the plumber um, come in now and start to wire up for the, oh well, pipe up um, for the kitchen. Obviously a solid floor here, so what we've had to do is just chase out down the side, but then the ends of them here are actually going to come up underneath the kitchen worktops. 
So I have had somebody um, who I've used previously for a kitchen, which you can see here. So I've got the design ready to go. Um, and I've also had my boiler um, guy in as well, just to make sure that the boiler can actually go on this wall here because the flue will have to come across and then above that window, just because this is not an outside facing wall. And there actually isn't any other outside facing walls, except for this one just here where this window is in the kitchen. So fireplace has now been removed in here as well. And of course the damp has been sorted. Um, just waiting for that to dry so then we can board over it. Bathroom's well underway, so plumber has started doing the pipe work, etc. And this is actually now ready for skimming out. Um, so this is first on the list for my plasterer to come in now um, and skim this. And then obviously the plumber can start fitting the suite. Um, and hopefully that window will be done pretty soon as well. Windows are on now on order. Into the back passage. Um, damp has been just sorted down there so again that needs dotting and dabbing and needs boarding over um, and then we need to put uh, to get it skimmed over before we then obviously decorate it. Coming up the stairs uh, all the wallpapers come off the walls which is quite a task I didn't do it myself I actually got somebody in to do it but um, yeah it took him quite a while um, and then here we are into the back bedroom so I've taken out all the electrics filled all the cracks all the holes in the wall ready for skimming managed to brick up that hole there it doesn't look the prettiest, but that's gonna be covered anyway. Um, and strip back some of the loose plaster. So I'm actually gonna fill that because the rest of the plaster seems pretty good. So I'm, I'm gonna have a go anyway at filling it, see what it's like. If I have to take the whole lot off, then I will do and start again. Just coming into the front bedroom, um, this is probably the, well, the room that's the furthest on actually. So you can see that all the paper's gone. I've got my notes in all of the rooms ready for my Sparky to come in this week, who's gonna start chasing out and doing a full rewire. I actually bricked up um, the bottom of that windowsill there because those bricks fell out once um, I took the windowsill off. So that's been sorted. And I've just actually just cut away the plaster um, on that fireplace just to open it up. I'm gonna put a piece of plasterboard on there. Um, so just before skimming and then put an air vent in it as well. So in this room here, we just need a few sockets. We need the light changing and then we just need it skimming out. Oh, and obviously that window changing as well. Again, we've got hard floors. These are concrete floors in here. So Sparky's gonna be coming in tomorrow night just to have a bit of a look around, just to see where the best place to put all of these cables is. Just obviously because you can't go under the floorboards, which would be quite typical. So I've actually had another quote in this. So this is the third quote that I've had in for this property now from an all-inclusive builder that's looking to take on the whole property and do all of the work. So let me just give you an idea of what he's quoting for, for each of the jobs. We've got supply and fit a new combi boiler and radiators and all new pipe work throughout the property, £9,000. Plaster all walls and ceilings throughout the property, £5,500. Supply white paint and gloss, paint all walls, ceilings and woodwork throughout, £3,200. Supply and fit new kitchen and worktops as discussed, £5,500. Supply and fit new white standard doors, doors frames, architrave and skirting, £5,200. Supply and fit new standard white bath, sink vanity uh, unit and water closet, £4,000. Supply and fit metro white stroke grey ceramic tiles in kitchen and bathroom, £4,500. That actually comes to a total of, I think it comes to, without adding it up, I think it comes to about £35,000. So then we put the windows on top of that as well, which comes to £40,000 to have everything done. I'm pretty convinced that I can do it for ten grand less than £30,000. So I'm looking around the twenty grand mark. Whether I'm right or not, I'm not sure, but I'm going to give it a go. So a great day for progression today. I've just had the invoice through and some photos from the windows and doors that have been fitted. So the total cost of that has come to 3,900 and something pounds. Um, but I'm actually away on holiday at the moment for a week and the installers have been in, sorted it and done it and sent me some photos. So I'm just gonna wait till I get back to pay the invoice. But we're now definitely cracking on now those windows and doors have gone in. But this front bedroom now is ready to go. I've got the chimney boarded up. I've got all the walls and the ceiling rubbed down and filled, ready for the plasterer. The window's in, boarded around the window, filled around the window, and that's actually now just waiting for the plasterer to come through. And then of course we can obviously start decorating. I'm now just working on the back bedroom. And this morning I'm actually just removing that old boiler cupboard. Um, now what I could have done is actually obviously restored it and had it as a cupboard there just left for the tenants. But actually, 
it's one less moving part in the property. And what I mean by that is that there's more chance of something going wrong if I leave that cupboard in there than actually if I just remove it and have those walls skimmed out. And then of course, if the tenants want to put a cupboard in there, then it's their choice, they can do, and then the cupboard belongs to them rather than belonging to me. So, you know, in the future, if anything did go wrong with the door, um, if there was any issues, any problems with that cupboard, it would be my responsibility as the landlord. However, if I just remove it, skim the walls and allow the tenants to put their cupboard in, then their cupboard is their responsibility. So what it will mean is this room then is just completely square. Nothing at all can go wrong with it at all, other than obviously dirt on the walls or the tenants putting holes in the walls, but that can be really easily fixed and really quickly as well. So we're now on the 27th of May. I'm just gonna give you a quick tour around to, so, to show you really where I'm at. So we've got the new window in. I've plasterboarded all the way around that window. If you actually wanted to watch a video on how I actually uh, plasterboarded and then filled around this window, then I'll just pop a link up on the top of the screen for you now. You can see that I've sorted out the damp course down here and actually reboarded over that wall. Um, the lounge hasn't really been touched, although I have been doing bits and bobs. If we come over into the kitchen, you can see that the Sparky and the plumber have actually taken some of the concrete out of the floor to be able to run their pipes and their leads and their cables down, etc. Um, and I'm actually just working on this kitchen now, um, just trying to get this uh, ceiling filled up again. Um, and I'll put some um, bonding over that ready for it to be skimmed. So new windows gone in, fireplace has been chopped out, ready to be boarded over. And then coming over into the bathroom, unfortunately there's no progress yet um, in the bathroom. My plaster is due in this week. So yes, the new window's gone in, but it still hasn't been skimmed out yet. So that's just holding up progress a little bit because I have got my plumber ready to come in and actually start putting the bathroom in. Um, I have sanded and prepared all of this entrance hall here. Um, new doors obviously gone in as well. So that's also ready for the plaster. So I'm actually hoping that he has time to be able to do this passageway as well as the bathroom when he does come. Stairs still looking as they were before. Um, I need to be able to just sort of get this remaining bits of uh, wallpaper off the staircase. Um, just sand it down, ready to be plastered, but it shouldn't be too big a job. In this front bedroom, uh, ready for the plasterer as it was before. So like I say, just holding up slightly, just waiting for that plasterer to come through. But once he does get a bit of time, he should be able to quickly pace through these rooms. Now looking onto the back bedroom, um, that cupboard has now completely gone, window's gone in and I've also boarded around the window as well and um, got some bonding in where that wall, where I had to take some of that old um, contaminated plaster off. So this room's looking really good as well. So really, really cracking on, but once that plasterer comes through, then we'll really start to notice a difference. With these fireplaces, they're obviously not going to be used in rental properties and you don't particularly want them to be used either. So quite common is for people to actually to board over them. Now, what you've got to be really careful of is the fact that if you actually board over it and seal it up, then the air can't flow through the chimney. So what you need to do up the top there is actually put a cowl um, or a vent of some sort to allow the air to be able to flow out the top of the chimney. And down the bottom here, what I suggest is actually plasterboarding over the top here and then putting a vent in. So as you can see, what I've done here is actually chop the brick back so it goes back to the main wall there, which will allow me to get some plasterboard on this fireplace. I'll dot and dab it on and then get my plasterer to skim all the way over it. And then I'll be putting a hole in and putting a vent on the front here. So I'm just going to be cutting up a couple of these posts just to pop into the fireplace. Now, typically, if there wasn't a lintel holding the fireplace, holding the bricks up, then I would actually use these to support it before I actually started moving things within that fireplace. However, this one has got a metal lintel running across, so it's okay. So what I will be using these for is one to secure, so I can actually stick a screw through the plasterboard and secure the plasterboard to it, just to hold it in place um, for better stability. But also as well, it will be able, it will allow me to be able to screw in the vent into something solid rather than just putting it through the plasterboard. So I sent the photos of the second bedroom over to my plasterer yesterday. Um, who is supposed to be coming in this week and starting downstairs on the bathroom, doing the small entrance, back entrance, uh, where you come in the back door, and then he was going to move into the front bedroom and the back bedroom. But he sent me a message after having a look at some of the photos. Let me just read this to you, because this is quite important if you're doing a renovation job, and if you're going back as far as I am um, to the old sand and cement. He said, just looking at the photos, realise that you've gone back to the original sand and cement on a lot of the walls. So those walls will need sealing with primer before any plastering work. I use SBR in these cases, two coats, either sprayed on or painted on. I can then PVA them when I come and plaster as usual. 
The SBR is something that I can do, but it will obviously be cheaper if you do it yourself. SBR acts as a suction controller. Old sand and cement walls suck the moisture straight out of the newly skimmed plaster and makes it very difficult to keep up with and get finish on. Usually it ends up with cheesed walls, which is a small hairline cracks absolutely everywhere if this isn't done correctly. This is SBR, so luckily I had some at home. So now what I'm doing is actually painting it onto the walls just to get these rooms ready so we can actually come in and skim. So this is actually quite an important one that you need to be aware of, that when you have new windows and doors put into a property, you'll need a fencer certificate, which basically just um, states that the company that I've used is legitimate, the windows have been replaced legitimately, and they're all um, as they should be for the industry standards. Now, I haven't actually got the fencer certificate at the moment. It wasn't left when they did the installation of the new windows and doors. So I've just been chasing. I have sent a couple of emails to the company, and I've just given them a call. Um, and he says that the fencer certificate comes directly from fencer, and it will be in the post within about four to five weeks or so which is absolutely fine however I also know from purchasing properties that the window companies don't always register the new windows and doors which means that you won't then receive a fencer certificate so then when you go to sell the property the solicitors will be looking for it and you'll have a bit of a problem so it's worth checking and chasing up if when you do have new windows and doors that to ensure that you get that fencer certificate so I've now put it in my diary for five weeks time to give them another chase if I haven't yet received it. It's six o'clock in the morning of the Queen Jubilee weekend and we've got four days off which is absolutely brilliant when you're trying to turn around a property in your spare time so this will be fantastic for me to really make some ground I'm heading in this morning after the last couple of days where my plaster has been in the property um, he's managed to skim out the bathroom the back entrance and also the gap that goes down to the cellar between the kitchen and the lounge so I'm really looking forward to seeing that because it really does make a difference once those walls where I've been patching them up and sorting out the damp work, putting a bit of boarding on, putting a bit of filler in etc. Once they get covered and skimmed it makes such a difference. It's almost as good as carpet day, not quite as good as carpet day but it is a good day. So we're on the 2nd of June today and we've got a bit of progression over the last couple of days or so. Plaster has been in and done that walkway through to the kitchen here and then also this back entrance um, which is looking really good now. It makes such a difference, obviously, going from that patched up job that I'd done. Remember, I'd done down there the damp work, but now it's looking really, really nice. And once this dries out, um, then it will look really good and start to look like we've got some progress. And then bathroom's also been done as well. So now I can actually, well, once this dries out, I can get my plumber back in. Um, who can start fitting the bathroom. So we're on the 9th of June and I'm just on my way back now from the solicitors for actually, from actually signing the contract for this property. Just been through the deeds and found out a little bit about the history of the property, which is also really interesting. The property's been in the family for, for a number of years now, actually so long and owned by the family member that's actually selling it to me, that the property hasn't been registered, so it isn't appearing on the land registry, so that'll need to be tended to. But I found out that the property was actually built in 1894, so it's been around and standing for quite a while um, and there's just a couple of queries just to be raised about some land that's been sold off at the back in, in the backyard of the property where next door has purchased it and has now got his shed on there but once those questions and queries are answered um, then everything should be pretty straightforward for me to be able to move through um, and actually complete on this property so today's the 12th of june and i can now see the light at the end of the tunnel why well because today was the final day of the preparation stage which means I'm basically ne now ready to start rebuilding this property which is absolutely fantastic during these projects you'll go through the three three stages first you've got the rip out stage which is quite fun you get in there with your hammer and basically just rip absolutely everything out and smash it all up the next stage which I've just been through is the really tough one and that is all the preparation work for your plasterer, your plumber, your sparky, everybody to come in before you can then start redecorating and basically just getting that property ready that you can then start rebuilding it. But today, finally, I've now finished. I've got everything ready for my plasterer to come through all of the rooms so we can skim it all out and then I can start getting some paint on the walls, rebuilding the bathroom and rebuilding the kitchen. Now, if you remember from the video, I've not actually completed on this property yet. So it is going through the solicitors. I have signed the contracts, but I haven't actually yet got 
up to the completion stage, which means that this property isn't actually costing me any money whilst I'm in here working on it at the moment. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is because I'm actually about to down tools and move on to a different project. That's right. Property number 17 is about to drop on my lap this week on the 16th of June. So just in what, four or five days or so. So I'm actually going to down tools. I'm going to get my plasterer to come into this property to skim it all out. I'm going to get my plumber in to sort the bathroom for me and while I'm working on the next property. Now, if at the end of this video, you can't see part number two of where I actually go in and turn the property around ready to rent it and basically finish it off. If it's not there, if it's not available, it means that I'm still going with this property and it's not ready yet. So do keep a watch out for part two of the BRR project, which is property. This is property number 19. The reason why it's 19 is because 16 was actually agreed before it and so was 17. So I might end up turning those ones around before this one gets finished. But look out for that second video and then make sure you look out for the third video as well, which is when what I will do is go through all of the numbers, all of the costs involved in this property. And if I've managed to get all of my money back out as well. So make sure you look out for those two. Thank you so much for following me through the journey so far. I really do appreciate it. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give me a thumbs up. It just helps others find the video like you have done today. Don't forget to go down below to click the link to get a free copy of my book, How to Buy to Let, if you yourself wanted to get into buy to let property investing. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.